I have to commend the players. They've been relentless in their desire to get better, relentless in their work ethic, um, their hunger actually to learn and improve and, and, and be included uh, in our programme, but also to push themselves when, when they can't be seen by the coaches necessarily as much as we would like. They're um, online with us at least four times a week. So we'll send our challenges out to them on, on a Monday. We'll have a one squad webinar with them on a Tuesday, talking about our game model and how we play, where we put them in scenarios, ask them questions that they've got to say their answers are excellent. They're very, very innovative. And on a Wednesday, we generally have a, an educational webinar on different topics. Um, our sports science and medical team have done different things. We've done um, the role of representatives within sport. We've, we've done um, organized crime. We've done child welfare. We've, we've done lots of different things like that. On Thursday, we've, we've changed it slightly where we actually work in units. So across phases, our 13s, 14s and 15s, all the defenders will go together. All the midfield players will go together, all the forwards and all the goalkeepers as well. And they'll have uh, different positional challenges and, and um, questions to have a go through. Uh, and then something that's been really, really popular, our Masterclass series. I have, I have to say it's been, it's been really well received, but the, the quality of guests that we've had on it, uh, we had Scott Arfield, we had the manager, obviously, and, and last week's with Yanis Hadji. For such a young man to have um, such a mature, well-rounded attitude to improvement, he, he basically reinforced all the messages we would love our young players to take away about self-improvement and getting better every day. And, and, and we're trying to be as diverse as we can in, in what we offer them. Our staff have taken to this challenge once again in, in a brilliant fashion. It's, it's not easy. It's very, very difficult to be innovative and creative with for our young players we're actually getting to see them as often as we would like not being on the grass which is what we all love doing but the staff have, have, have got on with not only engaging with our young players but trying to bring them something new uh, and I can't give them enough credit they've worked extremely hard but they've worked really smart as well and you did touch on the young players there and how impressed you've been is it such a big positive for you and the staff that they've adapted so well to this challenge it, it, it just goes to show how resilient they are uh, and how aspirational they are that even though we're going through a challenging time at the moment they still want to improve they still want to get better they're still um, intrinsically motivated they're not motivated by the coaches on the sideline shouting things just when no one's there watching they're, they're, they're trying to make themselves better they're pushing mum and dad to take them outside uh, and they're coming to us with questions what can I do in this scenario I don't have a goal but I play in this position what can I do and our staff are supporting them as well as they can but unfortunately a lot of it's landing on the shoulders of the players, which has, has shown us levels of resilience and relentlessness that um, potentially we take for granted when we can see them every day. But they're showing it in, in, in bucket loads at the moment, and I have to give them credit for that, that, that they, they are truly making this time their own. So if we look at our, our values of our club in terms of our ready values, relentless, they're showing that all the time. Excellence, they encapsulate that with the practices that they send in to us. They're aspirational because they want to improve and their diversity that they've shown in, in, their, in their learning, but also in their, their resource, the way that they've actually been able to be different, but still get things from the sessions. They've truly made it yours. So if we go through all the ready, all the ready statements, they're really, really living those values at the moment. And, and we could not be uh, prouder of them than we are now. And there must have been a lot of work behind the scenes as well and from the staff. How important was it to keep that sort of variety and, and keep leading the way with the, the online courses? Well, it's hard. It, it, it's hard because obviously we're limited in our interaction, but we've, we've had fantastic support from the age group coaches who are, who are leading things, from our analysis department who are, are cutting up new and different um, topics and different ways to engage the players. And from our sports science crew who have to be a little bit different in their delivery, but have... have um, utilised our Instagram page really, really well and, and interacted with the players in, in a different way. We, we're trying to find as many different ways as we can to relate to the players and interact with the players. If, even to the extent of, I, I had a, an email from a young player the other day where he was analysing Stephen Davis. He analysed every time Stephen Davis touched the ball in 90 minutes and then did it for the next game and then did it for the next game, which was incredible. But the way that they, they want to do it and the way they want to improve can't happen without excellent support from our staff. And our staff have gone above and beyond. They, 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 again, they've encapsulated our values. And, and it would be really easy right now to, to shut down a little bit because it's hard and it's challenging. But our staff have been relentless in their desire to support our players, every, each and every one of them. And it, it's been difficult 
but once again, proud of the effort that where everyone's putting it. And um, coach education week was held recently as well. How did that go? Well, it's, it's, it's just another thing that we, we're, we're aware that we put lots of stuff out for the players, but all of our coaches want to improve as well. They, they want to develop. They've got their own action plans that they're working through. So we've decided at the start of the year, we just do an entire week on, on developing our coaching staff. So uh, different updates from our curriculum, um, updates uh, that, was, that was delivered by Craig, uh, the head of the academy, just to say different structural things we're doing. But then dropping and, and, and delving into things that we're trying to do in research. Um, the under 18 staff, uh, Cameron and David, put on a, a fantastic uh, presentation as to what they're doing in terms of supporting their young players in terms of different positional challenges they've, they've created and a development report that they've, they've delivered to each and every one of the players after the games, which is a really, really cutting edge way, I feel, of informing our players' learning. Um, we then went on to inviting people in. So we had a guy called Steve Salis come on as an author and an educational specialist come in just to come in and shake up our thinking a little bit, which was really, really, really good, really enjoyable. And then we've got people um, reporting back. So we had um, Todd Lumsden, one of our, one of our part-time coaches. He was, he was doing a review on the United Coaches Conference, which is a massive event in the States. And as part of one of his licenses, he's gone to get his, um, his CPD for a few years. He's delivering back to us on the things that he's learned on this conference. So we've had lots of different variety for our coaches, but it's important we keep them engaged as well. It's important that we give back to them and, and put things on for them, as well as we, we are utilising our staff to support the players. We need to support our staff as well. We want to actually feed into them and we want to make this experience as challenging as it is, as much of an opportunity to develop themselves as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And the player care team is obviously available as well for the players. How important is that side of it too, away from football? It's incredible. The, the work that's been done there. All of our players know that at the end of the phone is someone they can talk to when they're going through any challenge. In addition to obviously getting their, their technical content, each player has a, a, a phone call, um, either individually or in a group with their age group coach to make sure that we're in contact with them every week and, and make sure we keep that consistency of approach that they've always got a touch point with the club, but we're always really reinforcing the fact that we're there to support them and help them through this time. And we make sure that we reiterate it in every communication with them, that we're here for them. So we've got our, our mental health nurse, we've got our doctor, we've, we've got our child welfare officer, Arlene, who does, does a fantastic job. But they know as well, our, their first point of contact might be the coach. And our coaches understand that, that they're, we're there to support our young players. Now, our young players... Uh, might be going through a challenge it has got nothing to do with football. They might be having a hard time at school. They might be having a hard time actually dealing with lockdown situations. We can help. And they know that. And, and we're very, very keen to, to push that message all the time that we're here to listen. We're here to support. And if anything's happening to them that they need support with, we've got trained professionals there ready to help. And it might not be them. It might be mum or dad that needs help. And we're ready to go and step forward and, and, and put forward that help if we can. And going forward as well to a time when, when things maybe get back to a bit of normal, I'm sure there'll be positives to take from this time as well and, and maybe use some of the things going forward too. Absolutely. There's lots of things that we do now in the way that we support our players, the way that we pre-frame um, the session. So if we send the videos out to the players, um, they know some of the stuff that we're looking for. They know the topic. So rather than giving the kids homework after the class, they give them pre-work. So they come into the class actually being engaged and ready to learn on the topic so all of well a lot of the players have said that they're really enjoying the game model video that really emphasizes the topic that we're going to work on in that week can we continue to do it when we actually come back into training and that that's a really really good thing and, and we're kind of wishing we'd have done it sooner that that we're really giving them positive modeling um really good examples of the things we're looking for uh the core learning objectives that they have, how they receive the ball, how they move the ball, the things they're looking for, and how the, that then translates from their age group into the age group up or all the way into the first team, showing that pathway through our academy is really important. And, and we're learning as well. And, and I think that's one thing that we've taken from this is, is our staff's openness to new methods. So even though we think we're doing a good job, we're out there researching, we're out there looking at other, other clubs, we're out there phoning other people and seeing what they're doing, seeing if there's something better than what we offer uh, and seeing if we can push our provision to the next level.